All right, so uh, we took a look at how we can use the graphical user interface, and now we want to take a look at how we can utilize the command line for Linux. Um, I'm going to open up the files uh, here as well, so we can kind of work through this in a way that hopefully will make sense. So just like in Windows where you have folders with stuff in them, in Linux you have directories and all the directories make sort of a tree that goes back to what's called the root. The root um, is right here. So the root right, is the beginning of the file system and that's pretty much like the, the start of where the hard drive starts. And all of these different folders are directories that are different paths to different files that are on your hard drive. So for instance right now with uh, this terminal open we can say PWD and that is print working directory. That's showing where we are right now in the terminal. So where we are right now is under the root and then home and then Alaska Linux user. So what we see here is we're in the root directory which is confusing because there's another directory called root which is the home folder of the root user and when I say root directory that's I'm actually referring to being at the root of the hard drive the beginning of the hard drive not at the root of the um, root folder for the home folder for the root user so I know that sounds a little confusing but you have to bear with me for a minute so our we're in home Alaska Linux users so here we are at root right and we go home and there's Alaska Linux user and so that's where we are right now now if we type LS right which is think of it as list like shorthand for list right we type LS and we see oh there's bin documents lineage uh, pictures oops bin documents lineage pictures uh, well so it goes kind of like this bin desktop bin desktop documents download documents download lineage music lineage music uh, pictures public pictures public snap templates snap templates videos videos and start 15 logs so everything that we see in here is also in here but there's actually more in here than we see if we type ls-lah list think of that as like list all hidden <clears throat> that's not actually what it stands for I'm just saying think of it as list all hidden you're going to see there's all these other files that we don't see in here and actually if we push control H in here we'll see all those other files that were hidden anything that starts with a dot is hidden it's a file that you want to keep maybe has a purpose but you don't want everybody to see it usually these are configuration files that uh, help configure your computer and so you don't need to ever touch them as a regular user but they are there so we'll hide that with control H again and once again if we type LS we see just a regular listing. If we type ls-l, we get the list of the regular stuff that H shows you the hidden. And we see uh, some information about all of these directories. The first thing that we see is they are owned by Alaska Linux user. So that's the user that owns them. And then the group that owns them is the Alaska Linux user group. So this is a little bit confusing especially if you are coming from a Windows environment and you're not familiar with Linux at all. But files have special permissions and ownerships in Linux that you typically don't see in Windows environments. Although some of the newer Windows uh, systems are starting to utilize some ownership and permissions and uh, so that uh, that is something to be aware of as well. But for instance everything in this home folder is owned by the user whose name is Alaska Linux user that's me or whatever the user is that you set up when you first set up the machine but that user the Alaska Linux user also has his own group which is the Alaska Linux user group so you say why do you have a user and a group permission well very very interesting so over here on the side is these letters which actually mean something 
So the D means directory. So notice this one is a file, and so it's not a directory, so it has no D, right? If we, uh, let's take a look in downloads. We'll jump into downloads. CD downloads. We'll talk about CD in a minute. So if we ls-leh, or actually just L, we'll make this a little bigger so it's easier to read. All right, so we've got this file. Let's go ahead and jump into Android Vendor. All right, CD Yalabi. There we go. Okay, something with a couple files in it makes it more interesting. Okay, so we have these files and we have this directory. Now, these are owned by the Alaska Lynx user as a user and the Alaska Lynx user group. So, over here on the side, you have these letters. And the first letter can be something like directory or links or uh, a few other special characters. We can talk about that more later. But then you have several other uh, characters. And you have, like for instance on this one, you have RWX, RWX, R blank X. So this is actually three different groups, groupings of letters to tell you something. So the first three after the initial letter that tells what it is. The first three tell you what the user who owns it is allowed to do. So the Alaska Linux user is allowed to read, write, or execute this file or folder. Okay, so that means read, write, or execute would be to read the file and see what's in it, write to the file to actually put something into the file to change it, modify it, and then to execute if it's something that's executable, like for instance opening a directory or actually running a script, then it can be executed or run as like a program or used in some way. The second set, the next three, which is read, write, execute in this case, means who, anyone who's in the group of Alaska Linux user has permission to read, write, or execute for that group. So, for instance, if there was another user named, uh, let's say, oh, uh, we'll call him, uh, you know, Ohio Linux user. Okay, let's say on this computer there was another user named Ohio Linux user, and that Ohio Linux user was also a member of the Alaska Linux user group. Then that user would have permission to work on these Alaska Linux user group files and read from them, write to them or change them, and execute them if they're executable. And then the last three is for everyone else. Everyone else has permission to read from the file and in this case to execute it if it's executable, but they do not have permission to write to it or change what it says. So now this file right here for the Yalabi vendor dot make file, I can read and write to it because I'm the Alaska Linux user and since I'm part of the Alaska Linux user group I can also read and write to it but everyone else could just read it but not write to it. So this uh, establishes permission of who's allowed to do what with, uh, with whose stuff in a Linux environment and that's actually really important particularly for things like Android. Uh, because Android utilizes a Linux kernel <coughs> and so there are permission issues with some things and that's why a lot of people root their phone because the root user has permission to do anything they want within limits. So um, right now we are here. If we say print working directory we are in home Alaska Linux user downloads Android proprietary vendor U lineage 15.1 Yalabi. That's where we are right now. And you can see here uh, all the files that we just looked at are right here. Now remember with the GUI you can click on something and say properties and you can actually see the permissions and if you have permission to change them then you can do so. Um, you could put them into different groups you, since you are the owner. 
You could change permissions for yourself, like you might want to change something to read only that you don't ever want to change by accident, um, or something like that. Allow executing file as a program if it is would be executable. Change thing like things like what opens it, that sort of thing. But so here we are. We're in this home. Alaska Linux user downloads Android proprietary vendor. Now notice when we do ls leh there's this dot and a dot dot. So this is a little confusing, but bear with me. Single dot means here, where we are right now. So if I said I want to look in the proprietary folder, like we want to look or list the things in the proprietary folder, and I hit enter, and it does list those for me, that would be the same as saying list the things in the dot forward slash proprietary folder meaning here and then the next place the proprietary folder and it lists those for us now notice if there's also the two dots which means the directory before this one so it means to go back so for instance if we ls dot dot we see that we're actually looking in the android proprietary vendor U lineage 15.1 folder and we see Yalabi lettuce sambar tomato and we're in the Yalabi folder already so ls and dot dot allows us to look back in the folder before us and we can actually string these together we see ls dot dot meaning go back one folder dot dot to go back another folder dot dot to go back another folder and what do we see we're actually looking now one two three folders back one to three folders back at the home folder and this is what we see now changing directory CD we did at the beginning of this video and this is a very important command because this is how we would move from one place to another so if we want to change directory we can use the dots as well we can say we want to change directory to that proprietary folder now pushing tab auto completes anything that you start typing so for instance I can type proprietary proprietary right and go there or I can say CD dot and I push P and the only P letter is proprietary in there so I push tab and it fills it out and I hit enter and it goes there for me so now I'm in the proprietary folder and I can say oh just to show you I'm in the proprietary folder so I can say uh, let's CD into the bin folder now I'm in the bin folder and I say LS what's here let's list the things that are here and we see the two files that are there notice this one is green so so far we haven't talked about colors much but directories are blue in this color scheme and this file is green and the rest are white white are just regular files if we ls lah we see that this green one has an x for executable people can actually run this as a program it does something particularly because it's a binary file uh, binary usually is a program or something of the sort but so we can go back now we're in proprietary just like if we clicked here uh, we can go back and string them together go back one two three and now we're in downloads right here we can see that we press ls or type ls and we see the files that are here another fun trick that you can do so let's cd into android and how about we cd into yalabi again if i just type cd and i don't put anything after it it takes me to my home directory notice I just typed print working directory and it says home Alaska Linux user it takes me all the way back home so anytime you just type CD it'll take you back home um, this will change based on what user you are it'll take you to your home what's interesting when you're building Android is it actually uh, sets up the device tree or not excuse me not the device tree but the source tree of your Android source code as the um, root directory 
and uh, I'd have to put air quotes around that, um, to say that's the top of the tree, and so when it goes back, it goes back to the top of the tree that's there. And it's, uh, it, it's something kind of unique and interesting that they do that allows it to reference from any point in the Android source code some other point in the Android source code. But the important thing to remember is CD is to change directory, and LS is to list what's inside of that directory, and PWD is to print the working directory. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of just how to move within file, uh, within folders, and go from one place to the next. So we're going to look at a few more things as well, but I just wanted to start there.